Rather than having one person write a eulogy for Cal, his family asked several people to share memories, honoring a man who was special in many ways. Cal and Karen were married for almost 51 years. Karen was the love of his life, and she knew him better than anyone. Here is what she wrote. That new guy in speech class, who is he? He answers to the name Cal Rodell. He seems nice, he's really good looking, and he drives a 57 Chevy. But he won't pay me a bit of attention. Oh well. Now after I'm gone for a year of college, I start working at Swain's. And one afternoon, that same guy comes through my check stand. Twice in just a few minutes. And he invites me to go to a basketball game. Later I learned that he told friends of his after our first date that he had dated the woman he intended to marry. And within the year, we were married. The 57 Chevy had given way to a 1965 GTO by then. Over the years, we owned many different cars, but those two always had a special place in his heart. We'd been married for less than a year when I backed his beloved GTO into a post. Oh, he was a bit upset at that. And I experienced the first of his many decisions to trade in that car for another. Now, over the years, we've had a multitude of vehicles, from a classic Ford Ranchero to a pumpkin orange Pacer, a 70s conversion van, a yellow Mustang. Our kids have memories of all six of us being squeezed into a pickup, and it wasn't the kind with a back seat. At times, the vehicles purchased was in light of how many youth might be hauled around in it. Shortly after we moved back to Port Angeles from Salem, Oregon, Cal became the moving force behind Junior Action. And in recent years, he might be stopped on the street to be asked, aren't you Cal from Junior Action? Or perhaps it was, hey, you used to coach me in basketball or soccer. Two words that well describe Cal are loyal and committed. I never had to fear that our marriage was on shaky ground, for he had pledged to love me until death parted us. He kept his pledges. Cal and I balanced each other well, especially in parenting. I was the strict one, and he knew how and when to show mercy. I was action-oriented and could put together the details. He saw the broad picture and knew how some, something would strike a person's heart. I depended on him to think twice, use caution, and be aware of all the possible ramifications. I'm going to miss his wisdom in how to deal with people and use care in not giving unintentional offense. Over the past year, Cal and I spent more time praying aloud together. His knowledge of scripture was deep, and his trust and reliance on God was steadfast. If he had the desire of his heart, it would be that everyone he loved would come to know and trust Jesus as Savior and Lord. I am looking forward to being reunited with him the day that I am also in the presence of the Lord Jesus. Without a doubt, Cal's brother and sisters are the people who knew him the longest. Here are reflections written by his sister Jan Rodell for her siblings Vicki, Joan, and Sam. It is difficult to choose just a few words to convey our deep love and our sorrow that our big brother is no longer on this earthly plane to share our lives with. Yet we rejoice in our knowledge that we will be with him again when we meet our Creator. Vicki remembers our mom telling her that when Cal was a baby, she dedicated him to God. And his life reflected that in so many ways. The way he and Karen raised their children, his outreach to the lost and broken, his dedication to the church and especially the children, his warm welcome to every life he touched and readiness to drop everything and come to your aid. Vicki says he was always her protector from the time she was born up into high school and he was always gentle. She really appreciated that and looked up to him for guidance. Joan remembers that as a young child, Cal would include her in many of his activities, like having her teach him how to make his bed and getting her to throw football so he could practice catching and helping him wash his car. It meant a lot to her to be included in her big brother's life. He always made her feel like she was important to him. And he was gentle. He was a protector. He cared because God was the most important thing to him. Sam recalls how much he enjoyed spending a couple of years helping Cal with Fairview Youth Group, creating jewelry together and doing what brothers do. 
Janus remembers his deep love and acceptance of her, his gentle guidance and his sharing of private moments, knowing that he would never betray her, and this was reciprocated. These words do so little to convey who Cal was to each of us, but if your life intersected with his, then you already know how deeply he has affected each of our lives and how very much he is loved and missed. Cal spent much of his life helping other people. This was beautifully and powerfully displayed in the way he ended his work career by becoming a chemical addiction counselor. His friend and colleague, Gail McCormick, offers these reflections about his time doing that. I was honored when Cal's wife, Karen, asked me to write about Cal the counselor. He and I came together on the helper path in 2004 or 2005 at Oak Street Center, an outpatient agency for the treatment of substance use disorders. He was just finishing the addiction studies program. I was the clinical supervisor. Cal had a long history as a helper and he was always interested in learning more. He was compassionate and quickly formed bonds of trust with the clients who were ready to change. He patiently listened to those stuck in negativity, waiting for an opportunity to open the path to a different way of thinking. I referred the Christians to him so he could use the faith they shared to find the way to freedom. I soon found that all populations responded to the unconditional love he emanated. None of us could get all our clients on a path to recovery, but he did remarkably well. Indeed, some of the people who came to him were who were very broken are now in positions of influence in the community. I'm sure some of you are here with us today. He loved you with the purity of agape love. Eventually, I left Oak Street and found myself starting Reflections. And it wasn't too long before Cal joined me there. I was so grateful to have him. He didn't need much oversight, keeping up on his paperwork and giving his best to each person who showed up at his door. I often asked his opinion on cases and on a system that was constantly changing. He was a great support to me, professionally and personally. Additionally, we referred people to each other for private counseling. I'm currently working with one he recently sent to me. It is a sweet reminder of the respect and love that we had for each other. In conclusion, I want to add, if anyone is helping in heaven, I'm sure Cal will be part of that. I miss you, Cal and I look forward to a time when we'll be together again. Cal loved the church and loved serving her. He joined the elder team at Fairview Bible in 1981 and served faithfully for almost 40 years. One of his pastors, Benjamin Hegvet, shares a story that beautifully reflects Cal's heart for ministry. Cal was one of the first people I developed a close relationship with at FBC. His desire to engage in relationships made him more than just a mentor, but also a partner and an older brother or father figure, depending on the situation. Therefore, I was thrilled to find out Cal was going on the 2018 missions trip to the Philippines and that we were going to be partnered together. Cal and I worked on our presentation of the Life Application Study Bible for months together. We discussed our favorite passages of scripture and how we would not only teach the pastors and ministers how to make use of the study Bible, but also that we desire to encourage them in their ministry through the word. Of course, many of Cal's scriptures were from Samuel. He always called it Samuel as opposed to first and second Samuel, pointing out that this is one story. And of course, the life of David. Cal loved to talk about David's mighty men and David's whole heart for the Lord. It was also evident that these passages were more than just entertainment. Cal's heart is fully for the Lord, as in all his relationships, he constantly pointed to Jesus. Cal and I spent much of our time in Baguio, and it was an extremely busy time. Cal taught many lessons for the Life Application Study Bible and taught Sunday school while we were there. Cal continued to minister in between sessions as he spent time getting to know the pastors and ministry workers. We would then go out into the community and teach different ministry workers how to help their congregations and communities deal with the vast amount of people seeking addiction treatment. Most days we would teach for six or more hours. And at every event we left, Cal left new friends. As we reviewed the sessions each evening, he often shared how important it was to encourage the pastors and what an encouragement it was to him as well. 
Cal and I also went out with the pastors in the evenings to share a meal and to continue to develop relationships with those doing the work in the Philippines. Despite this being hard on his digestive system and needing to sit up late into the evening after getting home to avoid heartburn, Cal never complained. He worked tirelessly to ensure that the Lord's workmen in the Philippines were equipped for the work the Lord had prepared for them. He also started several relationships with individuals that will have eternal significance. Our driver, Brother Ray, contacted me and let me know he always referred to Cal as Big Daddy. But this had nothing to do with Cal's size. The relationship Cal and Ray developed during the mission trip was so impactful to Ray that he viewed Cal as part of his family. Cal was Big Daddy because he was family and he was Ray's elder. This is just one of the many examples of who Cal is. Wherever he went, he made family. He put others ahead of himself and he shared Jesus. Cal knows what is most important in life and he showed this clearly while on the mission field. In a world where deep friendship between men can be hard to come by, Dad always believed in the power and importance of pursuing and maintaining those special bonds. One of Dad's most long-lasted friendships was with Bill Yuka. Bill shares this. Cal and I had a special friendship. He often referred to us as David and Jonathan because of the closeness of their relationship in the Bible. And we did have a unique relationship that lasted over 40 years. Over those years, I've watched Cal's family grow from kids barely in their teens to young men and women with grown children of their own. And in that family, it is easy to see the rich legacy that resulted from Cal and Karen in a lifetime of honoring, serving, and obedience to God. Cal and I, we shared a lot of stuff over the years, and, and we tried to be accountable to each other. What was special about Cal in my mind was his ability to always share the truth in love. And I soon realized that although it wasn't always my favorite thing to hear, I always knew in my heart it's what I needed to hear. Cal also shared his love for cars, <laughs> particularly fast cars, by taking me to the car museum in Tacoma. I mean, I had no idea such a place even existed. I mean, we spent the day going back in time, seeing all the different pristine cars from our youth that reminded us of the foolishness and adventures we had experienced. You know, every story seemed to start out with, I used to own, own a car like that. I remember we saw a GTO that brought up a story of his youth and a trip from Port Angeles to Squim that would have broken records and given him a hefty ticket at anyone clocked his speed. Now, when Cal talked about his Lord, he didn't beat you up with it. He didn't preach at you, he shared it with you gently. He would often follow it up with a well-placed question just to put the ball back in your court to make you think. All of this made him both a friend and a mentor. Someone I could trust and depend on. Someone I felt always placed others' interests in front of his own. We often met for breakfast or lunch, you know, to catch up on each other's lives, usually about twice a month. And I was shocked to see how many people knew Cal. Nearly always someone would come up and say hello while we were eating or talking. Those were special times. Food and fellowship. It just doesn't get any better. Cal was a people person who touched many lives, not only mine. I was blessed to have the relationship that I had with him. There are a few people in the world who would refer to Cal as Bompa. Words can't describe how much Cal loved his 19 grandkids and his four great-grandkids. One of his granddaughters, Samantha White, shares this about Bumpa. Some of you may know him as Cal, a friend, a dad, a brother, or a husband. But I know him as Bumpa, my grandfather. He is more than just your average grandfather that you only see on holidays and only call on special occasions. He was the man you called when you needed guidance, a hug, a shoulder to cry on, or even just a good time. He was someone to just tell you that he loved you, and you knew he was being sincere. He was active in every single one of our lives. He loved so deeply. I got together with a mutual friend of ours, and we talked about Bampa and how he radiated joy. He has the softest blue eyes 
and every time he looked at you, it was so loving and joyful. I grew up admiring my bumpa's love for my Grammy. The way he looked at her, it was like there was no one else in the room. The way he talked about her, no one could even question that she was the love of his life. I loved watching my grandparents, whether it be loving on each other, bickering with each other, or even just laughing with each other. Some of my favorite memories with Bampa are our dates. He would take time out of his week to take us out and show love to us. Growing up, I was a hard kid to raise. Stubborn, hard-headed, and a know-it-all. My Bampa always made it a point to break it all down for me and to show me different angles without saying harshly that I was wrong. Though sometimes it had to be harsh. Either way, I walked away from those dates feeling loved and heard. He listened to my heartache, my excitement, and my accomplishments. My grandparents decided early on to throw family reunions with their own twist on it. We like to call it cousin camp. Cousin camp was just for the cousins. And I found it a way to stay active in each of my cousins' lives, building relationships with family I rarely got to see. Honestly, if it wasn't for this form of family reunion, I don't think we would all be able to call our cousins our friends. I can't think of a single thing I won't miss about my Bumpa. His laugh, his eyes, his stern face when he was only slightly upset, his hugs, just cuddling up on the couch and pouring your heart out. I am beyond blessed to be one of my Bumpa and Grammy's grandchildren.